In this video, we describe a gypsum test that you can conduct in your office. The test allows you to determine the dissolution rate of your gypsum or gypsum replacement products such as calcium sulfate and hydrite. During this video, we use the term solubility interchangeably with the term to the solution rate. This is Larry Stoll from Pace Turf, and I want to describe for you today a, uh, a quick method to evaluate the solubility of gypsum products that you might use for amending soils to, uh, to manage sodium. Uh, the product I'm going to use for the standard right now is going to be is this Allied Chemicals uh, food grade or pharmaceutical grade gypsum. This is just a high quality gypsum product so it's uh, expected to perform really well in this solubility test. Uh, the other things you'll need is a, uh, a quarter teaspoon measuring device uh, and this will deliver 1.25 mils or 1.25 cc's of the uh, of the material and you're just going to fill up the top and scrape it off. You'll need a measuring cup. This is just a standard glass measuring cup. I've got one that goes up to 500 uh, milliliters or 500 cc's. That's what you're looking for to run this test. You'll need your calibrated uh, Field Scout EC meter to uh, measure the EC and some sort of a device for measuring uh, time for a stopwatch type of a system and I'm going to use the trusty, uh, trusty iPhone that you've seen in some of the other videos. What we want to do is to fill up the uh, beaker. I'm using tap water. I would suggest that you just go ahead and use your irrigation water. Uh, that'll be just fine. Fill it up to the top to 500 cc's. And the last thing, of course, you'll need is a notepad to write your, write your notes down. Turn on your EC meter. And take a reading of the, uh, the water before you put anything into it. The reading I'm getting right now is uh, 0 0.90. So that's the starting number, 0 0.9. Write that down, initial number. Open your gypsum container, scoop out a level, level spoon of material, so it's just uh, right up to the top. Dump that into your container, and then just go ahead and stir it up. Start your clock, or just look at your watch, and we're going to come back in 15 minutes and take a look at the reading. Simple as that. We'll be back in 15 minutes. All right, well, we're, uh, we're coming up on the 15 uh, minute mark, so we're just going to take the electrical conductivity reading. We can uh, mix it around a little bit. Put the EC meter on. We're getting a value of 2.08. That's the Siemens per meter uh, for the solution with gypsum. Also notice that the uh, the solution is relatively clear. It looks like there's a little bit of uh, material, a little bit of material still left uh, non-solubilized. That may either be impurities in the product, or it could be some uh, of the anhydrite form of gypsum, or it just hasn't had enough time to solubilize in there. But this is overall looks pretty good for a 15-minute test. Okay, now let's take a look at that same sort of a simple procedure to evaluate uh, an alternative, a, a gypsum replacement product. This one's called Calcium, and we are using uh, one of their one of their products. It is a mini prill uh, calcium product, and to make it fair, because it's in a in a granular form, we've gone ahead and put it in a mortar and pestle and we ground it up to a fine powder, so that we're making sure that we know that the active ingredient act is actually going to be easily uh, as easily soluble as we possibly can, not having a problem with the um, with the binders that they use to make the granules. So we fill up the measuring cup to 500 cc's. Take our initial electrical conductivity reading. It's zero point 9-1, pretty much the same as the last time. That's our initial reading. 
and then here we go. Take a flat. You use a flat scoop of the finely ground powder, and we'll just dump it right into the jar. Give it a good stir. Start our clock. Let it run for 15 minutes. Come back in, and we'll compare the salinity of this solution to the uh, pure gypsum solution to determine roughly how soluble this product is compared to a, uh, a pure gypsum product. Okay, we're back with the calcium solution. I got a phone call, so I was delayed. We ran out to 25 minutes instead of the targeted 15 minutes. Uh, that can happen, but this will just give you a little bit more time for the pro product to be soluble in solution, so this is a little bit more liberal test than what we did with just the pure gypsum. And the reading we're getting on the meter is 1.18 decisiemens per meter after 25 minutes. So it's quite a bit less soluble compared to the gypsum uh, product that we talked about uh, earlier, the one we tested previously. So what does this mean for you as you try to interpret your own solubility or dissolution rate test results? Based on our tests, products that are composed primarily of gypsum should raise the EC of the water by a minimum of roughly 0.8 decisiemens per meter. Remember though, this 0.8 decisiemens per meter number was obtained only after we subtracted the EC of the water from the EC of the water 15 minutes after the product had been added to it. If the product you're testing shows a much lower increase in EC than 0.8, then it might not be gypsum and it most likely will not perform the same as gypsum in the field nor have the same sodium management benefits as gypsum. To evaluate the uniformity of our scoop measurements and to estimate bulk density, we measured the weight of 10 individual scoops of each of the products. The following graph illustrates the mean and standard error for each of the products that were evaluated. The bulk density of powdered gypsum is about 0.67 grams per cc and our tests of the Allied Custom Gypsum averaged 0.68 grams per cc. Interestingly, there was a large variation in the bulk densities of the different products evaluated, and that is why we chose to report calcium as milliequivalents of calcium per gram of product in the test results table. I think it's only fair to give you a little bit of a warning. We're gonna start uh, showing some equations and conversions to figure out how we calculated that increase in salinity. So here it comes, if you wanna switch the video off, go ahead, but otherwise just hang on, we'll go through the calculations. What we know is that gypsum, powdered gypsum, has a bulk density of about 0.67 grams per cc. We used 1.25 cc, so that gave us a total of 0.838 grams of gypsum that we introduced into that 500 cc container to watch the electrical conductivity increase. With that 0.838 grams of gypsum, we know that gypsum is only 23% calcium. That's calcium sulfate dihydrate. So gypsum is only 23% calcium. That gives us only 0.193 grams of calcium in the flask. To calculate equivalents, we have to divide that value, 0.193, by 20 grams of calcium per equivalent of calcium that yields us 0.0965 equivalents of calcium. We multiply that by a thousand to bring us up to milliequivalents. That gives us 9.65 milliequivalents of calcium introduced into that container. When we use the conversions from Caro's work, it's in uh, decisiemens per meter based on milliequivalents per liter. So we multiply by two to bring our 500 cc's up to a liter. So that's 19.3 milliequivalents of calcium per liter. Now we multiply that 19.3 milliequivalents of calcium per liter times 0.085 decisiemens per meter for every milliequivalent calcium per liter. The result is 1.6 decisiemens per meter increase in electrical conductivity that we should see uh, for every 1.25 cc's of gypsum added. Finally, we conducted a replicated trial where we added 1.25 cc's of each product to 500 cc's of water and allowed the materials to dissolve with periodic stirring over the course of 30 minutes. As you can see from the table, the gypsum products dissolved fairly rapidly, releasing more than half of the calcium per gram of product compared to the theoretical dissolution rate. The calcium sulfate and hydrite products release far less calcium per gram of product. 
Rapid dissolution of calcium amendments is particularly important for water amendments by injection of gypsum or for sodium management prior to leaching events. For this reason, we recommend that you use gypsum calcium sources that dissolve rapidly in water.